Welcome back. Okay, I want to share this really, really neat example of the central limit theorem that I got from Dr. John Quintanilla at the University of North Texas. Uh, Dr. Q is a legend in probability and stats. And this is, this is you know, from when I took his class uh, a bit over 20 years ago. It's a really, really good example, okay? So the statement of the problem is as follows. A punter or a kicker in the NFL has historically averaged 41 yards per punt with a standard deviation of eight yards. So this is American football, and the punter is the only person who actually kicks in American football with his actual foot. What is the probability that this lonesome kicker in their next 40 punts will average at least 45 yards? So their historical average is 41 yards what, with a certain standard deviation. What's the probability that their next 40 kicks are gonna average at least 45 yards? This is a really interesting probability problem and we're gonna use the central limit theorem to solve this because essentially 40 is a large enough number of kicks that the central limit theorem is gonna kick in, okay? Good, um, so the basic idea is that we're going to introduce this random variable, our uh, mean, we're gonna call this x40 bar, this is the sample mean of these next 40 kicks. This is one over 40 uh, times the sum from i equals one to 40 of the random variable xi, where xi is the distance of each ith next kick or next punt. Okay, so xi we're assuming is distributed according to this distribution with an average of 41 and a standard deviation of 8. We don't know what the distribution of the punter's kick length is. It might be Gaussian, it might be Poisson, we don't know, but we do know its mean and its standard deviation, and that's all we need to compute this probability with the central limit theorem. So this is our random variable. Um, I'll write down some more facts in a minute, but the basic statement is what is the probability that this uh, x40 quantity, this x40 bar, the, the average of the next 40 kicks, is greater than or equal to 45. That's the thing we're trying to compute, okay? Now we know some basic, um, some basic properties of this sample mean x40. We know that the expected value of, um, of the average next 40 kicks, the expected value is 41. And we know that the sample variance or sample standard deviation is gonna be related to this population uh, standard deviation and the sample size 40. So we also know that the standard deviation of x bar 40 is equal to this standard deviation divided by root n. This is eight uh, over root 40. Okay, so the variance would be 64 over 40, that's fine. Good, um, and what else do I wanna know? Um, yeah, I mean, each of these random variables themselves has an expectation of 41 and a standard deviation of eight. And so that's pretty easy for us to compute these quantities. We've done this in previous lectures. So this is the information we need. And so essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to write down the central limit, by the central limit theorem, we're going to derive what this probability has to equal. So by the central limit theorem, okay, essentially this random variable, because 40 is a large enough sample size, this should be approximately normally distributed with this mean and this standard deviation. So this, um, so essentially we should have x40, it should have a distribution around the mean of 41 with some standard deviation, some you know plus or minus sigma. And we're trying to figure out what's the probability that we're all the way out here at an average of 45 kicks, um, 45 yards per kick, okay? Good. And I mean, you can kind of see, like you're gonna use a cumulative distribution and compute this area. So this area equals one minus area to the left or this area here. 
So we're going to take this random variable, we're going to subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation to turn it into a standard unit normal, and then we're going to compute the area to the left uh, of this value, which is some standard deviations to the right of the mean. Okay, good. Uh, so by the central limit theorem, we have the probability that x bar 40 is greater than or equal to 45. That's equal to the probability. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this minus its mean divided by its standard deviation, x bar 40 minus its mean, 41, divided by its standard deviation, which is 8 over root 40. Now this variable here, let me make this, um, this is x bar minus mean divided by sigma, you know, whatever, it's, it's standard deviation. This is normal 0, 1. This is a normally distributed random variable, uh, mean 0, standard deviation 1. And so it's the probability that this is greater than or equal to 45 minus 41 divided by 8 over root 40. Or said another way, it's the probability that my standard normal z variable is greater than or equal to this quantity here. Um, and if I plug in all of these numbers, you're going to get 4 divided by 8 divided by root 40 is 3.16. So we're looking for the probability that a standard unit normal random variable z is bigger than 3.16. And this is 3.16 standard deviations. That's way out there to the right, okay? So I could look up in my stats table what the cumulative distribution function is for 3.16 for the standard unit normal, or I could type this into you know, my Jupyter notebook into Python and get the cumulative density function at 3.16 standard deviations in a standard unit normal. Um, this is essentially equal to 1 minus the cumulative density function evaluated at 3.16. Um, and I'll make a note, note that this is 3.16 standard deviations, which is a lot, okay? And if you look this up in your kind of back of the statistics books tables, you're going to find that this is approximately 7.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So this poor kicker has about a 1 in 1,000 chance of increasing their average punts in the next 40 punts to 45 yards, given their historical punting average and standard deviation. Now, this is kind of a cute example. Um, obviously, People can change, weather can change, you can get injuries. These are not independent events, and this is not a fixed distribution. This is probably a wandering distribution. But if you assume independence of the kicks, if you assume that there's just, you know, kick after kick after kick are all distributed from the same um, distribution, then there's less than a 1 in 1,000 chance that the kicker can increase their punt average to 45 yards. I think that's really cool. Um, this is a great application of the central limit theorem. It shows how you can compute something pretty interesting by, you know, creating this random variable, realizing that 40 punts is enough for the central limit theorem to kick in. The sum of all of these individual punts is going to be normally distributed. And so you can subtract off the mean, divide by the sample standard deviation called the standard error. And now you have a unit normal random variable, and you can compute exactly how likely it is for that to be more than 3.16 standard deviations outside um, of, you know, of the mean. And that's what 45 yards is to 41 yards um, in the next 40 kicks. 45 yards over the next 40 kicks is 3.16 standard deviations away from their historical average. Very unlikely, one in a thousand chance, easy to compute with the central limit theorem. Uh, thanks to John Quintanilla. If you see this video, uh, email um, Dr. Q and tell him thanks and that you liked this example. Okay, thank you.